What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. So a lot of you been writing in and wanting to know how to grow rosemary. Yes, rosemary is a pretty tricky herb to grow. It's probably, in my opinion, one of the more tricky herbs that you could be growing, but it's a very fun one. And so in today's episode, I'm gonna be breaking down everything you need to know to having success growing rosemary. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about rosemary is it is in the same family as lavender. And so because it's in the same family as lavender, you need to kind of treat it like lavender. And we've done a lot of videos on how lavender seed can be very particular with how it germinates and the conditions that it likes to germinate in. And so what we're gonna do first is we're going to do what's called cold stratify. Now, rosemary seed, I have germinated rosemary seed without cold stratifying, but I'll tell you the success rate goes up dramatically when you do cold stratify. Now, cold stratification is just the process of simulating winter. And so what you wanna do is you wanna take your rosemary seed, you wanna put it on a damp paper towel for about two to three weeks in the fridge inside of a Ziploc baggie. Now, make sure that the damp paper towel is not soaking wet. I simply take it, I tip it upside down, give it a couple shakes, make sure nothing drips out. That is all you need to know to make sure that it's not too wet because it can't be soaking wet or it shouldn't be soaking wet, but you want it just damp enough so that the seeds absorb that moisture in the fridge for two to three weeks. Then you're gonna pop it out. And after you do that, then, you, then, uh, then I wanna talk about the trays that you wanna put them in because it's super important to put them in the right style trays because rosemary, once it starts growing, is really particular about moisture. All right, so now once you have cold stratified your rosemary seed, it is super important to place them in a small cell container. The reason why is that smaller cells, you can control the moisture a whole lot better. When it comes to germinating rosemary seed, moisture is probably gonna be one of the biggest reasons why you either succeed or fail, and that's because rosemary seed is very, very particular about how damp it likes the soil and for how long the soil stays damp. So I find that these 200 cell trays work awesome for sprouting rosemary seed. I've done it and I've had success in smaller, like three inch pots or containers, um, similar to kind of like, like these little three inch pots here. I've had success with those as well, but I find that you have to be very conscious about how much you're watering and how damp the soil is staying so that they don't, so the seeds don't actually rot in the soil. And so I find I have a lot more control in these trays here. Also, what's really nice is these trays allow me to actually bottom water, which helps to control that moisture even more. So what I'll do is I will get a tray like this. It's a little shallow, holeless seed tray. There's no holes in here. And I will sit this tray. This tray has some peppers. I know I ran out of trays, but uh, I'll show you. We're going to go out to the greenhouse. I'll show you the plants actually growing. And um, I take this tray here and I fill it up and then I bottom water. I water from the bottom so that water wicks up into the soil. That way I'm not displacing seeds, I'm not putting too much water in, and that way as soon as the soil shows me that it's damp and it's absorbed the moisture, I can take it, I can remove this tray from the flat, I can dump out any excess water, and that way I'm not risking overwatering. So I like these trays for that. I find that I get way more success in these trays than I do in like bigger containers just because I have a little more control. So uh, with that, let's go jump out to the greenhouse. I, I wanna talk about soil. I wanna talk about you know temperature, humidity. I wanna talk about transplanting time, fertilizing. There's a lot of stuff that you need to know about growing rosemary because they are just so much more particular than some of your other crops. I mean, I can, I can throw basil seed in a pot and barely take care of it. I mean, it's just, it's such an easy plant to grow in comparison to rosemary. But like I said, rosemary is a really fun one to grow. So let's go ahead out to the greenhouse and talk about that now. All right, so now we're in the greenhouse. Beautiful, love it in here. And we're gonna talk about the other things to growing rosemary. Now, again, this is just to get them started, not to get them in the garden. Everything I'm talking about with things like moisture and soil, all of that can be translated out once you transplant it in the garden. However, um, I think that most people struggle when they're in seedling containers like this. And that's because seed starting is really the hardest step. Once you get it in the garden, it's a little bit easier to take care of. So um, basically everything can be kind of translated out into the garden, but these are what they're going to look like once they start to germinate. These are slightly larger cells. These are actually, this is a hundred, I believe it's 120 cells in this tray here. So slightly larger than your 
200 cells here, but, um, but nevertheless, these small cells are really, really nice. And again, this is what they're gonna look like. They grow very slow. A lot of gardeners find that they will, uh, they'll you know, go away for three to five days. They'll see a sprout and they say, oh good, it's sprouted. They'll come back in like two or three more days, hasn't grown. They'll come back in like two or three more days, hasn't grown. They'll check on it like a week and a half later, still hasn't grown. And that's because these, believe it or not, are five weeks old. <laughs> five weeks old. And they only have two little sets of two little sets of leaves. But once they start growing, I call rosemary kind of the freight train of the garden because once they start growing, they take off and they grow super, super fast. All right, so when it comes to soil, it is super important to get the soil right. In these trays here, we have our standard seed starting mix. We start all of our seeds in, but the right soil is so important because the right soil is going to hold on to just enough water to actually help them to germinate, not too much water that they actually start to rot and mold, but it also is well draining. So any excess moisture that's found in the soil, anytime you overwater, that extra water is going to drain through the soil freely. And that's really important because when you're talking about rosemary seeds, you're gonna find that your rosemary seeds will stay in the soil just germinating for about two to three weeks. That's before they even sprout. That's before they even poke their little heads up out of the soil and say, hello world, they're gonna be sitting in that soil for two to three weeks. And so the more moisture that is locked in that soil, the higher the chance of things like rotten mold actually killing off the seeds. So we use our standard seed starting mix, which is what we always go with, which is either a finely sifted pro mix or we use a sunshine blend number four. Either or, both work really great, but we're going for a high porosity mix. That's how spongy and how much, you know, how much moisture holding capabilities the soil has. A high porosity mix with lots of perlite, lots of vermiculite, and uh, that perlite and vermiculite help to increase the drainage capabilities of the soil. The peat moss has been pH balanced with dolomitic lime, so it's pH balanced to right around 6.5, which is perfect for your rosemary. And also, because it's been sifted, it's very fine. There's not a lot of chunks, and that allows you to pack these trays with just enough soil to keep them happy for a little bit. We'll typically keep our, our plants in, the, in these little cells here for about five to seven weeks. That's because they grow so slow. And it's just enough soil to keep them happy so that they aren't struggling, but not too much to where it's holding excess moisture near the roots. Because that is what will kill your rosemary, is excess moisture near the roots. So getting the right seed starting mix is super important. Now, because the plants are growing in these containers for so long, what do we do? Whoa, what do we do when it comes to nutrients? Well, <laughs> almost lost it, Spider-Man reflexes. Um, so not just a gardener, I'm also a superhero. But uh, so we don't uh, normally fertilize our seed starting mix. However, there's a but, big fine print, we do with rosemary. And the reason why is because rosemary stays in these cells so much longer than our standard seedling. You see, if you're growing, like this is cauliflower, it's not yet germinated, but this will germinate very fast and it's gonna get transplanted out of here within like a week's time. So it's not gonna stay in here very long at all. And so it's gonna get fertilized once we transplant. However, our rosemary is gonna be sitting in these trays for like I said, five to seven weeks. And just because it's small doesn't mean it doesn't need nutrients. So what do we use? Well, we use trifecta. All right, so like I said, we do use fertilizer when it comes to growing our rosemary because they're sitting in that soil for so long. It's good to give them some food, keep them healthy and happy. So we will use, uh, we'll use either uh, trifecta or VegaGro. Now, VegaGro is basically the vegan version of trifecta. Both are awesome. Highly recommend either. Uh, the VegaGro is 5% nitrogen, 3% phosphorus, and 6% potassium, whereas uh, trifecta is 5% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, and 4% potassium. You might be thinking to yourself, how are they both the same? Well, basically both are fast acting and slow release. Both will actually use nutrients basically the same exact way when the plants need them. And so regardless of what you're going with, we use both these for our plants and um, I cannot highly recommend them enough. Um, they are awesome. And uh, we'll just use basically in like a wheelbarrow full because we're doing a ton of seedlings all at once. We're gonna put about three or four cups of trifecta into a wheelbarrow. Now that might not seem like that much nutrients, but again, as seedlings, they don't need that much nutrients, but we are giving them some because they're gonna need some nutrients to keep them, basically to get them by from the point that they're growing to the point we transplant them either into bigger containers like you saw or into the garden. And so some nutrients is important, but you're not doing a full fertilizing. 
at the point when you transplant it out into the garden, that's when you give a nice full fertilizing. And with trifecta, we'd use maybe like two tablespoons uh, on, you know, on like a plant, and that's gonna last the entire season. This is just kind of kind of giving them a little bit of a, uh, an appetizer until they get into the garden. All right, so now when it comes to temperature, it's really important that you keep these at a nice balmy 70 degrees. The reason why is, yes, rosemary is cold hardy. However, they're actually a Mediterranean crop that prefers arid environments. That's why things like water is actually kind of their, their kryptonite. They do not like a lot of water. They don't like really cold temperatures. Though they can handle it for a little bit, they prefer arid and warm. And so what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to simulate arid and warm. Almost think of them not quite like a cactus, but fringe between like a normal garden crop and a cactus. They like very similar conditions to like things like citrus or even avocados. And so uh, we'll typically find 70 degrees is a great temperature to grow our rosemary. And that means if you're growing them in like a cool, you know, kind of a cold garage, you wanna make sure you add a little bit of supplemental heat. Or if you're growing them in your home, that's fine too. But when you move them out into your garden, make sure that at least the nighttime temperatures are not getting down any further than probably like 45 degrees. The nighttime temperatures will be cold, yes, but hopefully the, the daytime temperatures, which is important, are at least in the 70s or slightly above that because these will do so much better in warm conditions. Now, as I kind of alluded to, arid, right? Arid environments. That has everything to do with how these are going to grow because that's how they naturally would be growing is in an arid environment. So the temperature, but also the humidity as well. These do not do well in humid environments. If you're growing in a really muggy environment or if you're someone that likes to use a humidity dome to sprout your seeds, disregard that. Do not use humidity domes. If you're living in some place where it's very humid, you're gonna struggle to grow uh, rosemary and that's because they like dry. They like it nice and dry. And so uh, we'll just basically throw them out in whatever, obviously, whatever humidity we have, but generally uh, you don't want them in anything more than about 80% humidity. You'll notice they're gonna suffer from things like leaf drop, powdery mildew. They're gonna suffer from a lot of different kind of plant-borne diseases if you put them in a very arid, you know, very humid environment. Again, that arid environment uh, is, it's, it does not breed things like bacterias and molds on the leaf surfaces as it would in a humid environment. And so we're gonna be keeping these um, in this greenhouse here, right around 70 degrees, right around probably 60, 55 to 60% humidity, which is great for these. And then the, the final thing to kind of note that is also really important with arid is again, the soil, right? And how much water they actually get. And so we touched on water in the soil and how it drains really freely, right? That's super important because if you look at arid soils, there's a lot of like sand, there's a lot of kind of aggregate that helps drain that water really fast. But also how frequently do they get the water? And so I'm gonna, uh, well I already watered these, so I'm not gonna water those, but I'm gonna water this freshly seeded tray of rosemary and I'm gonna talk about kind of how often we water our plants. All right, so like I said, watering is kind of the last thing. We wanna simulate arid environments. So we're gonna pour our water into the tray here, we're gonna bottom water. It's super important that you bottom water, especially because with arid plants, bottom watering is way better than top watering. Remember, uh, when a plant is growing, okay, forget the fact that there's a lot of benefits to sowing seeds with bottom watering because you're not disturbing the seeds, you're not splashing them around, but once the plant is actually growing, the roots of arid plants are very aggressive. They like to go down, they like to go deep, they like to search for that water. And if you're watering, there's no seeds over here, so I'll kind of simulate, but if you're watering over here like this, you're basically going right to the source, and that's fine, I mean, it's gonna rain eventually. You know, There will be water that will come in contact with those plants, but if you're starting seeds and you're trying to kind of keep things as controlled as possible, watering from below will actually encourage root development, encourage an overall healthier plant, so that when you do transplant it into your garden, you're not gonna be bottom watering in your garden, but by then they'll have a nice aggressive root system, which will hopefully spread further and faster to get the plant established, so it's gonna do better in your garden. But uh, like I said, we're gonna water these, I would say about once a week. We're not gonna water these as much as we would like a cauliflower or broccoli, any of, the, any of these other crops in our garden uh, or in our greenhouse here, because of the fact we don't wanna overwater. So what I will do is I'll let these sit here for I'd say about five, 10 minutes, let them soak up that water. Once I notice that the trays have absorbed that water, I'm gonna pick it up, give it a feel. Okay, it's, it's notably heavier than it was. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick it up every single day. I'm gonna kind of feel what a light tray feels like that needs water. And I'm gonna feel what a fully, you know, fully saturated, just freshly watered tray feels like. And that way, that's gonna be my gauge. Because these, these cells here are so small, I don't know if there's moisture in the, uh, I mean, the tops are gonna dry out. I don't know if there's moisture down below. So by feeling for the weight is gonna be your best guide at knowing when to rewater. And at that point then, I'm simply gonna lift it up, pour water in here, let them soak it up, and any excess water, dump it out. That way you're not overwatering because they don't need that excess water. It's just to help them bottom water. It's gonna go back in the tray for about a week or so, I find, and this is really going to ultimately give you the best chance of success for growing rosemary. But that's about all I know to growing rosemary from seed. I hope you guys enjoyed. As these get more mature, we're gonna be moving them out in the garden. We'll have a follow-up episode, hopefully kind of reiterating the things we talked about, getting them in the garden, getting them growing big, and uh, so hopefully you guys will grow, grow along with us. So let me know in the comments box below if you have any other questions. But until next episode, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to th throw a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. We have tons more gardening content coming out. And uh, if you want to get this uh, Sauerkraut Kids t-shirt, make sure you go check out mygardener.com. We got seeds, we got these cool t-shirts, got fertilizer like trifecta, all that good stuff to get your garden growing and look cool in the process. All right, take care guys, grow bigger, bye.